Hey. It's been a while since I've done a video in which I expressed my thoughts, I know. And the last time it was uh, very much a very angry sort of rant that I did about, particularly about um, President Trump. And in fact, that uh, it wasn't too long after his election, after being put into office to really piss me off. And uh, now that it's almost a year since the election, those feelings have not died down. In fact, I'm become even more frustrated about the way things are going, the sheer incompetence, corruption, the just utter contempt for democracy that has been being pushed in Washington right now. Though, actually, I'm not going to really speak about that today, so I just decided to tackle on a lighter subject in light of a certain movie that's going to be releasing in November. And that I'm talking about is the DC Simac Universe. Or the DC Extend Universe, as some have unofficially called it, though some people, though apparently it started out as a joke. So I'm not going to, just going to try and refrain from that whole DC Extend Universe thing. Well, that has been pretty much kind of what some have embraced as the proper term, some fanboys. Well, to really start out with is that uh, in light of the sort of big event that is supposed to be happening with uh, the DC Sam Universe, the uh, heroes come together to uh, fight off a great evil, right, with uh, Justice League, is that there just has been this kind of uh, thing in which the build towards this big epic team-up hasn't exactly been on a solid foundation, right? Now, of course, you know, we've... Uh, the movies have been successful, for sure, but most of what has built towards this epic team-up has been not very good. Because uh, most of what the DC Cinematic Universe has brought to offer is either come from mediocre to just completely awful. Right? And with one sole exception, but I think we all know what that is, but let me just kind of build towards that. So... Way they decided to launch off the DC Simac universe was, of course, with Man of Steel, and uh, with that uh, particular film, in which um, up leading up to it, I, I was just very excited to see this kind of a new, different take on the Ma Superman character. But what I ended up with is a very dire, very joyless, and very cold feeling film in which uh, the movie just kind of doesn't really give inspired hope as, in spite of many times say, dating that this film that this hero is going to inspire hope at no point does it come across that any hope is inspired because it drowns itself in being very tragic, very sad, very very sappy sort of well, I mean, not sappy, but very just um, trying too hard to try and make it this sort of uh, tragic sort of movie, right? But uh, in trying to make it human, it pretty much goes too far into trying to make it devoid of a lot of uplifting moments or joy. I mean, there's attempts at uplifting moments for certain, but uh, they just come across as very flat, in particular contrast to certain scenes like when most of Metropolis is being destroyed by dubstep. <laughs> but, uh, essentially, um, some uplifting scenes that are in very stark contrast to scenes of just being very brutal, very attempt to being dark, right? I mean, 
what I just one of the most explicable moments of tone dissonance definitely has to be the moment in which Superman and Lois kiss each other when they're over the ashes of a fallen city. It's like, yes, let's make out in front on top of what remains of an orphanage. That is the great building of romantic chemistry. And there is a line along the lines of, um, <clears throat> along the lines of, you know, how they say it goes downhill after the first kiss or something like that. I'm like, I think I can only uh, go up from here at this point. And of course, the film pretty much ends with... Well, not completely ends, but uh, one of the final moments is having our hero snap the neck of the antagonist. Uh, as to essentially... And him screaming out in anguish. It isn't really anything triumphant. It just uh, is essentially Superman kind of being... Very an anguish over the fact that he had to kill his villain, and uh, yeah, that just doesn't really inspire a lot of hope. I mean, just uh, essentially seeing our hero being in anguish over trying to save the world, essentially, and this is supposed to be an uplifting character, Superman, the sort of person we're supposed to look up to, but uh, this movie seems to go out of its way and say. Superman is just... I don't know. Actually, I'm having a hard time really trying to understand what they were trying to do, except maybe try and make him more human. But uh, trying to drown a movie in so much tragic moments and then expect us to be a hero to root for, it just doesn't really help. It just doesn't really work, particularly in contrast to the fact that... Uh, he doesn't quite do the grandest of jobs of trying to save ev just about everyone. I mean, there might be some things that were out of his control, but honestly, there is just certain moments in which it really doesn't really feel like a sort of heroic sort of thing, and it's not really called out upon. And, well, that is until, of course, the next movie, but it should have been something that would have been explored in the film itself, not having to set up... Uh, little threat threads to try and say, oh, we'll just explain it in the next film. Don't worry about it. That's just... It's just a bad excuse for some mediocre writing. And that just really... I, I really hate that sort of thing in which they do with trying to set up a sort of sequel bait. Um, it just doesn't really uh, excuse it, right? I mean, it just does... Uh, when you can't be bothered to explore certain aspects in your film the first time around just to have it uh, put to the sequel, that is not very good writing, I don't think. It's just a sort of thing in which um, I'm not interested in seeing Superman just uh, learn things and then not have anything come out with it, not just... Uh, seeing the sort of uh, tragic, the sort of destruction that has been caused by uh, this uh, sort of conflict, and then things just sort of come resolve them to the next movie. Now, I want to see something of a gradual development with the character, but in Man of Steel, there wasn't really anything with all that uh, stuff that's been happening. It doesn't really feel like anything meaningful has come across. It just doesn't feel like, and I'm particularly how very thinly written Superman and Clark Kent is written, pretty much, because it is essentially Clark Kent and uh, trying to build up Clark Kent into what he's supposed to be, but the way its character is development, it's not very made, very defined, it's not very built up uh, in terms of how it defines character. I mean, there's a one point in which Clark goes to the church, and he's essentially, there wasn't really much reason for it in other, just to enforce some Christ symbolism into there. Uh, essentially is that we didn't see anything that establishes a family being religious or anything like that, save for the fact that how some, the parent, I believe it was, of but a few people that uh, 
saying is that how Clark was in that one parent how saying about what Clark means, like a gift from God or something like that. I'm, it's been a while since I've seen the movie, so. But essentially is, um, excuse me, but as all that religious connection, it just doesn't really come over, nor the, um, nor particularly about uh, anything that of uh, the father's defi saying of what he chooses to be, and I'm not even so certain he <laughs> follows their advice. It never really comes together as a whole. I mean, when, also when the moment in which he uh, does his whole heat vision towards the uh, unborn children going, Krypton has a chance, um, had its chance, I mean. But uh, essentially, that particular moment, I never really got the connection towards, except maybe Jor-El saying about how Krypton is pretty much dead and is not anything that they can really do at this point. But uh, I, it just seems like a very thin, very thin connection towards that, and it just um, trying to put into a moral gray area about the whole aspect of Superman. It just makes me think, um, then what is there really to, um, derive, and especially what is there really to feel very positive or uplifted about? I mean, and which, uh, there is one thing to do when a darker interpretation, but another thing in which it's trying to do everything in its to, it can to try and completely remove any sort of light elements from the storytelling. And that is actually something that is a bit more exemplified in Batman v Superman. And now to get to the Batman v Superman. Oh boy, did that essentially become such a big mess in trying to not only be a continuation of Mass Steel, but also set up the larger DC Cinematic Universe. And when in hand, you have uh, trying to deal with the fallout of the events of Man of Steel and establishing Superman as this global force. And then this other hand in which you uh, try to um, essentially uh, set up a conflict between him and Batman, of course, right? And uh, it's essentially leading to the... T fight that pretty much people have been wanting to see for movie theaters in years, right? And then there is trying to set up this sort of story in which uh, it builds to the greater DC Cinematic Universe, in which um, eventually it all comes together to be able to get to the team-up of Justice League. But in doing so... It essentially tries to do all these things, but doesn't do them in a very, very thorough or very sort of de very polished or developed way, in which a lot of the times I was asking myself, why? Why was this thing ha Why was it happening like this? Why is all this stuff happening? And just... With regards to that, there's proper build, there's proper character motiva development motivation. It never really feels like there is anything that builds ver very properly in Batman v Superman. I mean, even with the whole thing in which Batman de develops a conflict with Superman, um, in which they try to make a whole arc about it, it never really develops into anything that I feel like it only should, and particularly the fact that uh, Batman himself is kind of... We're, this is our introduction to this world's Batman, and we're just... Uh, aside from the whole prologue in which we see him uh, witnessing firsthand one of his uh, best friends being di a uh, victim in the whole conflict between Superman and Zod, but... Uh, Essentially, beyond that, though, we don't really have a much of a sense about this Batman. I mean, aside from what is told, but there's a th little storytelling about show, don't tell. Right? We're just being told these things, but we don't really feel them, because we're not really shown it. 
And then there is the aspect about Superman, who was even less of a character in this film. He isn't given as much lines for one thing, but there's also the fact that it feels like he is essentially not so much of a central focus this time, and it's never really... I mean, even with other other characters trying poise as his importance, the character himself does not really come across as a thing less more developed than what he was in Man of Steel, except maybe he seems to and just be able to say he seems to uh, have a new hate on for Batman, but uh, essentially that was like it makes them kind of hypocritical when you think about it, <laughs> well, essentially. Um, what is it, uh, because a mass vigilante is trying to take out crime, and uh, but Superman is essentially policing the world, kind of, uh, and I don't know exactly how much far removed they each other, and even Batman seems to have thrown killing the villains out the window, right? Essentially is that uh, some interpretations of Batman, which he's very careful not to kill the villains, and in Batman v Superman, he's all, fuck it, you all die. <laughs> That's essentially, uh, well, I say essentially a lot, what's wrong with me? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that uh, sort of thing in which, uh, but aside from the whole personal conflict and essentially Superman being strong-armed into fighting Batman, it doesn't really feel like uh, there is that strong of a, a... very strong of a big conflict between the two characters enough to really feel like the whole big battle is deserved. I mean, so you can make a case, of course, of the fact that uh, Superman had even if not directly responsible for had, had has had some responsibility on the huge destruction that has uh, plagued the planet and the fact that, um, you know, the question is so if you can't have much, too much power, what is uh, really uh, going, what does it say about someone who has too much power? What would they be able to use it for? Uh, essentially is that those themes are very muddled in a sort of movie that tries to juggle too many things at once, and uh, particularly when we're supposed to have see Superman as the sort of person who knows the best for everyone, but when we have a slow movie, motion montage to a bunch of newsreels about uh, discussing Superman, we see him saving people and all that, Superman does not look at all pleasant about it. He's looks very depressed, sad about it. He's like, it's just kind of the step, sour face on him. is like, those are not so, so much looking like they're uplifting moments. It's like, oh, do I have to really rescue this many people? It's, no one knows what it's like to be a Superman, to be the sad man. Or, uh, just... And sort of a thing in which you feel like uh, it's supposed to be inspiring hope, but essentially it doesn't, none of it really comes across as that strongly in there. And, uh, well, with that particular moment in which we're supposed to feel absolutely devastated when he dies, but <laughs> essentially the death of Superman just comes across as that thing in which it is something that they hit. But uh, along with the fact that the Batman Superman conflict, trying to echo something that has happened in the comics, but have none of the emotional builds, have none of the history that really builds that moment. And so when that's removed, when they tr hit that moment, it very much falls flat. It doesn't uh, come across as anything sort of uh, really deserved or, or earned within the movie itself, right? And, uh, so that's essentially, uh, and that, uh, anything that, uh, tried, moments that tried to build across, right, is that they all fall flat.
essentially, with this overstuffed movie, not to even getting to the fact that throw in Wonder Woman in there, who um, essentially was the big, just a big setup for uh, her character, essentially, and then the blatant trailer bait for the rest of the DC Cinematic Universe of her just watching a screen, seeing the other heroes being set up, and then there's the whole thing about Lex Luthor going into a higher power thing in which uh, it tries to excuse that as a motivation as to why he knows so much about the heroes and that sort of thing, but uh, it essentially does not but there isn't anything that really feels like built upon with the whole very uneven tone of the whole film. And essentially, under and with uh, the biggest, uh, what's trying to be the big uh, set to the rest of the universe, it doesn't really feel, it feels like it pretty much... Uh, doesn't really do a great job even clocking over two hours or about over three hours if you watch the Ultimate Edition, which I haven't, by the way, um, is that uh, when you have this much time, it should be excusable to try it be it so uh, be so unfocused, essentially, to try and juggle all these elements together. Right. All right. Now, speaking of unfocused, we get to then... Following up on that Batman v Superman, we got Suicide Squad, which I'm not going to try and go as much depth in because I feel like it doesn't matter as much as the other two's in trying to build in this whole DC Cinematic Universe, but uh, essentially the uh, Suicide Squad, which feels very much like a film that was essentially following... Um, a lot of trends, a lot of trends of about movies that are coming across. You got a band of misfits, Guardians of the Galaxy, a soundtrack filled with a lot of old pop songs, Guardians of the Galaxy, a sky, a threat that has been exemplified by a light shooting up into the sky, just about every blockbuster, including the Avengers, of course, and um, essentially the, uh, there is just, uh, a lot of these moments in which a bunch of, uh, te the team is pretty much being strong-armed to being together, but eventually find themselves being a quiet family, of course. That's a lot, true of a lot of team-up films, essentially. But, to sit, but, uh, and, of course, uh, Profunctory after credit scene in which uh, has been the trend with a lot of Marvel movies, but that's essentially that was uh, that didn't really seem to matter all that much, even if it does have Ben Affleck. But essentially, with Suicide Squad, it essentially felt like something that was designed by a whole bunch of people who looked at what other things have done. And decide to pretty much copy those wholesale, right? And then there is the fact that uh, it um, is also very much uh, felt like somebody had taken existing footage and took a hatchet job to it, right? and essentially arranged it in such a way in which it feels very much like it was it's removed from whatever original vision it's been like if it's. Judging by the extended introductions or all the flashy effects, it feels very much like a film that was uh, pretty much given a bit of a hatchet job in post-production. I can imagine maybe David Ayer had much something a bit more darker in mind, but essentially they feels a bit half way there, half full. It's like... Uh, uh, a big problem I really, truly had about it is the fact that it is essentially supposed to be a team-up of the biggest supervillains in DC Comics. Essentially, a lot of these people being strong-armed to do something that they are supposed to be killed. And they probably be die for, and hence the name Suicide Squad. But then decide to give it a story in which it would doesn't feel in any way far removed 
removed from the sort of uh, stories that would normally be with normal heroes. I mean, dealing with a supernatural threat that has a guy in the uses a light in the sky that uh, is a typical of what superheroes do, but for a team of superheroes to supervillains to handle, especially one that has a freaking boomerang, uh, that just really is very... just, just very uh, uninspired, is what I'm saying, is that... Uh, it's a sort of storytelling in which it would be, if you want to get a group of supervillains, why not to be a bit more of a smaller threat or something, well, dangerous, but not something in which it's like, you could just have superheroes do this, not have that sort of story for it. And of course, another thing is that I've, ex I've had expressed before is pro quite possibly the worst interpretation of the Joker Jared Leto, but, uh, and uh, essentially his needless inclusion in the whole package and the fact that he less real, doesn't really act so much a clown prince of crime as much as he is just a thug in clown makeup. I mean, just the stereotypical sort of uh, white person's interpretation of a thug in clown makeup. Essentially, there isn't anything like electric joy buzzers or like uh, comical, like cartoon bombs in hand or anything like that. Is essentially a Joker being essential. All is psychotic is just his laugh and um, it, I'm balanced, but nothing really that screams the Joker. I'm I guess how. Well, Harley Quinn doesn't really feel like Harley Quinn that much either, but I would say it's a testament to Margot Robbie in which she's actually one of the better parts of the film, her and Will Smith in the film, in which it uh, particularly feels like, like uh, they could be these characters with far better material, right? But uh, with Jared Leto and, of course, with all the stories about how he tried to get into character, that... Uh, does not really want me to see him in any capacity in any other DC movie in the future. Even even if they try to make him a bit more jokery of a character, I pray for the sake of the rest of the actors and just really think, yeah, I don't want to see him anymore in this DC Samac universe. And of course, with all these movies that have come on, of course, when the, there's the fact that with the quality of these movies as real as bad, mediocre to awful as they are, you would think that it, it would um didn't think of. Uh, you wouldn't think of what, how a one film can do a 180 to try and uh, turn quality around. And, but then, of course, with the following year, this following summer, we finally got a Wonder Woman movie after years of waiting, in which uh, everybody had been wanting the Wonder Woman, and there's been many attempts, but uh, none of them have really worked out, including one script by Joss Whedon, which... Uh, yeah, well, judging by some samples I've seen, it probably was for the best that didn't move forward, as it was it. When Joss Whedon can have his um, little strengths about uh, writing, but uh, Wonder writing Wonder Woman wasn't one of them. Of course, there's a whole thing about Joss Whedon that I won't get into about certain controversies. But uh, what I what I felt like. Um, this uh, new, uh, this Wonder Woman is that suddenly, see, DC was able to just four movies into this cinematic universe was actually to able to pull off something very good, very amazing. I mean, there is a few things in which it can say maybe is a bit following trend. Uh, following its trends on its own, I mean, setting up a hero in a uh, 
Old War setting pretty much strikes a Captain America, though it's been with Wonder Woman and since her inception and her getting involved in war. Um, and, of course, the whole aspect of a uh, mythical being being involved in a uh, human world, world environment kind of strikes a Thor as well. Uh, I would say that... Uh, with uh, regards to Wonder Woman, her interactions with the real world, I felt, was a bit better than Thor, is the fact that uh, while they do play some things for comedy, they still pretty much uh, do uh, establish with regards to how the mortal world has a lot to learn and to see the, uh, and the ravages of war, essentially, is essentially not... Uh, it, it doesn't uh, try to uh, make it feel like the... Uh, sitcom misadventures of Diane uh, in the uh, mortal world of the uh, 1910s. <laughs> as, a, as I feel like, uh, in a, as an inverse, it's like I felt like in Thor, the uh, Asgard parts, as well as the uh, stuff involving the Frost Giants, uh, that uh, I felt was the strongest parts, whereas the Earth stuff was the weakest. I felt in Wonder Woman, Themyscira stuff wasn't, was kind of the weak parts, and the Earth stuff was the stronger parts. Because in Themyscira, I felt like there was uh, quite a few moments of, like, and it just felt like a, the uh, world building was kind of, eh. And just feel like a particularly Hollywood, once again, using... Uh, I, once again, using a very romanticized version of Greek mythology. I mean, we have the whole Zeus and Ares thing, in which Hera doesn't enter, nor Athena, right? I mean, Athena doesn't... I don't recall there being much of mention of Athena anyway. It's like, with all these gods being mentioned, no room for goddesses? I mean, come on. Is this a movie about uh, islands of... Worry a woman, you decide to neglect to have goddesses in the film. And it does, I guess it does chalk up to the fact that what people might be aware of or the fact that it's done by a male screenwriter, right? But essentially is that I don't really like the fact that they kind of... It's uh, pretty much throughout a lot of the other gods just to make it... Uh, particularly the goddesses to make... I guess a bit more of a simplified narrative, but I feel like it removes a lot of what could have been potential themes by including someone like Athena or something like that. But essentially, and the, uh, but uh, essentially when it gets past uh, their mascara, when it really kicks a door drive, I feel like it's kind of a hits its point in which we start to see the dangers about the outside world, how it's kind of a very scary and dark time to be in. Uh, to essentially, Diana is there to try, essentially, be the person who is there to inspire hope, to really be a push for justice, to be able to see about, essentially, be a... Uh, Far more heroic than a lot of what the DC heroes have been established so far, and uh, not playing it off as just overtly traumatic or just a very... Tra because we essentially build of this uh, sort of heroic sort of figure, and uh, they fall through with it without it just uh, being all very mopey or very dark in tone and that sort of thing. And because of it, I mean, there is, of course, a tragic moment, but essentially it comes at a time which it feels like it is deserved in which the, uh, because it goes with the thematic of being able to, horrors of war is that you might do something good the one time, but essentially the, uh, war, there's still chances are of how, how things might go wrong, right? And essentially, it's even if you're a powerful Greek goddess, is that not always, um, there is, so, and, and it's always something that you can always control. But essentially, though she does very much try, she is deferred by the fact that there's this tragedy happening around her, but instead she just presses on be able to fight on. Right? And essentially, that is what I felt like 
was absolutely missing is like drowning in all the travesty of the tragedy of the previous films is that there's never this uh there's never this feeling of a drive with the other hero they'll drive with Superman or Batman that feels like as uh, genuine to be a progression as uh, Diana does in Wonder Woman, right? in which uh, we essentially see her character built up from the island of uh, Themyscira and being able to how it contrasts with the real world, particularly when her pursuit of Ares, um, while it does uh, turn out to be correct at all the same time, it's, uh, it t does it shows that is exactly the uh, sort of... <clears throat> I mean, it's a sort of deconstruction of this, that uh, battle between good and evil to unright, in which, um, you know, it's, 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 you can't just put, point to a source and then say, that's all the source, I'll just kill it and everything will be fine again. Uh, I guess it does kind of go that route when it feels that um, Miss Lupin is the, uh, I know, David Lewis, but I'm just like to call him Remus Lupin, uh, essentially uh, turns out to be Ares, and uh, essentially when he is killed, it does seem like warfare has ended, but I don't th but I feel like it may be just in the media vicinity, I don't know. But essentially is that uh, showing how you know, idealism can also be deconstructed, but also can be... Um, meaningful is to be able to uh, push for the force of aim what uh, the sort of idealism that can be strived for and uh, what the realities are associated with that try wanting to end more but uh, what it essentially means to try and do that I mean uh, maybe a bit more thoughts maybe I have a bit more thoughts about but essentially is that I felt like Wonder Woman did think went about trying to do a theme and was able to go through with it without being so messy on its progression. And essentially trying to show this Diana, this beacon for truth and hope. Well, hope, better, better beacon of hope than Batman, uh, Superman, who has hope on his chest. Right. Uh, essentially hope, but doesn't really do a whole lot to inspire it. And, uh, essentially, it felt very well done, you know, just, uh, it just got, it just, uh, kind of uh, said that it took Paige Jenkins this long to direct a movie after Monster, because, uh, when she was able to bring, like, get, to uh, come back, she was able to do it in this just sort of glorious fashion, and hopefully opens the doors for more female directors to get more, um, opportunities in Hollywood and female-led films as well. And there's a whole lot more I would like to say, but essentially is that I felt like Wonder Woman was the first genuinely good DC film, and unfortunately had to be at the tail end of a universe that has been mediocre to just awful, like I said. And of course, uh, but I was at least glad they were able to get her right, and, um, yeah, that was really just so I could say is that much about that, and, uh, yeah, and do apologize, my throat is a bit raspy, so, but just wanted to be able to continue on here is that with all that builds in the cinematic universe, of course, box office successes, them all, though none of them have quite crossed a billion just worldwide just yet. I mean, not, neither are some of the Marvel movies, but they've def but there's been quite a few of them that have, there have been a few of them that have, right? Uh, so be able to say is that, regardless of how box office performance factors in the movies, um, Three out of the four movies have been trashed, or at least given mediocre reception. So I'm just wondering is that whether or not um, it just feels like it earns this point about whether or not 
the Justice League feel movie feels like it is uh, properly built up to this point because of the fact that the movie is just uh, trying to essentially be this big team up with heroes and we've only had three of the heroes being properly set up and one of them, I don't know how much you can count it being Batman because he shared a movie with Superman, right? And uh, so what uh, just for the gig is like three out of a roster of six that uh, all the other three heroes, the Cyborg, ha Aquaman, and the Flash have only just been given very, very scant small appearances beforehand, not given proper set, but Flash, I guess, goes over because of the fact they made the cameo in Suicide Squad, but that was just a, oh look, it's the Flash! Or the fact that, or Batman, his small appearance in Batman v Superman, where he gives a very cryptic message of uh, obviously from the future, right? And uh, but essentially is that no given, not really given the grand entrance that they be able to deserve into the story. Wonder Woman, of course, be stealing the show in Batman v Superman, in which uh, she already has a hold over the others on that regard. I would be able to say is that in comparison, and of course fanboys are going to hate me for bringing up comparison to Marvel movies, is uh, on the Avengers, you had four heroes giving their proper setup. And of course, with regards to the fact that uh, on the two additional ones on the roster, Black Widow having a big grand entrance in Iron Man 2, even if it's not the most flaring of which, one of which her introduction of uh, being into what the uh, movie uh, is when her big black whale suit is a pretty much shameless ass shot. And of course, I would say Iron Man 2 was pretty much the Batman v Superman of the uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe, in which it does try to b frame its own story, but also saying that the rest of the Marvel Cinematic Universe comes across as a mess and as a result of it. But moving on from that, um, but B Black Widow does get a bit more of a proper setup in comparison to, say, Aquaman or Cyborg, that sort of thing. And then there's also Hawkeye, who has a bit of a scene-stealing moment in Thor, even though he's just mostly pointing at Thor while he's fighting one of the S.H.I.E.L.D. agents. It's just a bit more standout than just having their footage be looked over by someone. Yeah, just to be able to say is that... Just has a bit more of a bigger, grander setup than just having people. Just uh, being uh, so pedestrian, very pedestrian look at the superheroes, right? And which, uh, so essentially, is that uh, with regards to how Avengers are being, be when built, it felt like it was more of a big earner than just having. It's just very, very, very minor sort of builds for these characters, right? And of course, maybe with Batman, you can't really say is that we've all done Batman, right? But essentially is that with his initial film, though, it was kind of not the sort of uh, grand builds that it has, because this isn't a character that we've seen that before, sort of Batman that we've seen before, I mean... With regards to, um, it's definitely not the one that is in the Dark Knight. He is def and it's not one from the Burton film era films. And it's because somebody else new whole new character, so just doesn't, doesn't really feel as defined. I mean, even if you take into the fact that his history of comics, this isn't exactly a comic book version of Batman either. Um, there was that uh, whole or the thing in which um, Batman himself doesn't feel like he has quite built himself on that particular thing in comparison to, say, Iron Man or Captain America or Thor or the, um, yeah, so, or the Incredible Hulk. They'd just be able to say is that we, 
I going to say is there isn't really much to be able to say is that there isn't a whole lot built for our heroes and leading up to Justice League. And uh, part of that particular problem is uh, the there is a lot that's sort of trying to say how much there's this sort of emotional build-up made with these characters that uh, there is a particular moment in which, uh, or this sort of story in which uh, there's a moment in one of the trailers in which they say Superman showed the best in all of us and all I can think of is that Arrest Development mo moment in which they um, it's, uh, and we're having great moments together and it cuts to uh, white screen and black text that says footage not found because at this moment it was, it was like with regards to how Batman v Superman and Man of Steel had built up the character and <laughs> never really felt that deserved, never really showed that it is the best in all of us. While they saw was just a very kind of mopey superhero who has had faced tragedy most of life, even got almost killed by a heroes uh, to almost uh, just be able to say is that there isn't that sort of um, brought idealism, I guess. All that I can say is that we were able to find and, uh, the qualities of this character after he died. <laughs> but to just be able to say is... Uh, I should probably not say just be able to say as well. It just... Uh, but uh, I usually don't go off scripts on these sort of rants, so you can understand. But, um... And uh, just to put it... Bluntly, is the fact that um, all this sort of idealizing a Superman of the DC Cinematic Universe just comes across as flat. It never really feels like it was something that was earned from the time that we spent, the very long time so spent with the character, even with the little things that he does do. Right. And because of the fact that it doesn't really feel like it's emotion, something that emotionally connects to one another, or feel like it feel feels like it's entirely the uh, entirely what has been built up for some time. Yeah, because it feels like no, no, you're you're not gonna try and pull this because of the fact that the movie. Is you've uh, pretty much just haven't really established Superman as that uh, sort of paragon that we usually associate with the character for many, many years, or even with the Christopher Reeve movies. It's like, that feels like that build was with that character and not the Man of Steel Superman, not the DC Cinematic Universe Superman. And so that's why it's all just goes comes across as, nope, you're not going to, uh, you do not have anything earned to this point. Of course, there's the aforementioned point of the fact that, uh, yeah, much of the roster who's just been given a promo package, as I mentioned, the fact that, uh, with, with regards to much of the heroes, aside from Batman, Wonder Woman, just no real big, big given build, I mean, the Flash is probably given this third most, fourth most, right? But essentially that's because he has more than just looking into a view screen, looking into video footage for, and he's not being uh, connected in any way with the now currently running CW series, just how the Flash, and so there is that just, um, no real big connections for the other heroes other than Batman, Wonder Woman, and Superman. So it feels like anything was built up there. And, um, you know, think about it. What the movie does feel, too, is that there was supposed to be, it was supposed to be a big threat that's being, was established in Batman v Superman. Right. And which would be able to say parademons, uh, apocalypse, that sort of thing. And which, um, yeah, with all that uh, built up, uh, 
one of them being in a dream sequence that just feels like it comes even with I mean, without common context, just feels like it comes just completely out of left field. I mean, why Batman beat having this sort of prophetic dream sequence even comes to another question, the fact that Lex Luthor is talking about a person who is coming and doing that whole ding, ding, ding. <laughs> Uh, I just be able to say is one thing to get off my chest is I actually was entertained by Jesse Eisenberg's Lex Luthor. If anything, it felt like he felt was trying, even if failing at trying to be the sort of character. Uh, essentially, is one thing I feel contrary to what others have felt. I didn't really feel like Ben Affleck was that uh, standout of a Batman and Batman v Superman or Gal Wonder Woman was realized all that well. To be able to get back to my point here is the fact that uh, at, what the threat that's supposed to be coming into the Justice League is supposed to be something that was supposed to be established in the uh, in uh, it's Batman v Superman just up but doesn't really feel like a uh, doesn't really feel like it was uh, given a sort of proper really uh, grand sort of uh, built up and it felt like just no. It just uh, I mean while there is Chitauri just kind of felt like a bit of a small th I mean, threat that didn't feel like it was be given a huge build up it still was led by Loki who was given all the big story in Thor right big uh, sympathetic story in Thor, right? Oh, with uh, Age of Ultron, of course. The I would say might be a bit more closer because of the fact that it's kind of... Um, Ultron is something that was just never really established before, but then was given prominence into this movie and pretty much dealt with in the whole same movie and never really felt like... It, whether it would have been the major threat they could have been, and uh, yeah, that whole thing has just felt like it, just trying to put a major threat into the second Avengers movie. And of course, uh, that is all going to change, of course, with Thanos, who's been given all the fanfare in the world, which will be the villain in the Infinity War movies, uh, with Infinity War and the as of yet unnamed fourth Avengers movie, uh, to set the way with regards to Justice League is that there hasn't been anything that felt like it was properly built up, and it's just been one movie that felt like it has been trying to build that up. Uh, to essentially, there wasn't anything that felt like it was really anything that's really feels like it deserves a I mean, anything that felt like it uh, may built properly, except maybe comic fans would get it, of course, and comic uh, fans have gotten it. But to the rest of the general audience, it's like, with regards to looking at what's ha was established, Batman v Superman, it's just a mind-boggling sort of moments. Right? And so it was not... Um, it's, uh, it's supposed to be a movie, but it's supposed to you know, try and establish its own stuff. So when you're trying to include something that's with the comics without proper explanation, you might want to do a bit more to include the general audience. I mean, not everything has to be spelled up, but at the same time, not everything has to be cryptic as hell. <laughs> or something as inexplicable as just having a dream sequence about things that might happen. <laughs> That's why I'd be able to say, uh, it's gotta really, sometimes it's probably should I make a counter of how many phrases I repeat here. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Now, and of course I have a little note sheet on the side here, so that's why I'm looking on here. And so, uh, another thing that has been made apparent about Justice League is just how the production has been going along and whether or not that might factor in as to whether or not uh, as to the quality of the final film. Now, of course, I wouldn't be able to 
mention that without mentioning the fact that um, Zack Snyder's daughter Autumn had passed away during the post-production of the film, so it wasn't able to finish the movie. Instead, uh, jo uh, Justice League director Josh Sweet, I mean, Avengers director Josh Sweet, um, was brought on to b help finish the reshoots and uh, that sort of thing. So, yeah, that wasn't something that was beyond the control, and I won't um, really fault anyone for that because of the fact that uh, Zack Snyder was grieving for his daughter, so it, and so that's why, uh, so I'm not going to uh, make any sort of harsh light about that, the fact that uh, something tragic happens, his life and he can't finish the film, so uh, at least, at the very least, their film is going to be finished, even if it's uh, not to everyone's liking, I mean, some people just don't really like the idea of uh, Joss Whedon being taking over, particularly in light of how, yeah, that whole treatment with Joss, with the Wonder Woman script they talked about earlier, and also the fact that uh, what has come to light about uh, from an ex-wife about how he's been sh essentially um, not the feminist paragon that many have built him out to be, and. Uh, might be a bit of a creep as well, but uh, I'm not uh, so certain about all that, so I just want to be able to say is that I'm not uh, feeling a strong matter one way or another, though I've also heard about how we treated a, one of the actors on Buffy when he, she got pregnant. Right. As I actor's name escapes me right now, but I just want to be able to say is that there is a few things that some people are a bit cautious about Whedon taking over and also contributing to the screenplay, which is the, part of the reason why he was brought on in the first place, it, and even to get a screenwriting credit on the film, right, but won't, uh, but won't be getting a director's credit. It's going to be mostly Zack Snyder's baby, it looks like. So that's probably the part of the reason why it's just going to be his name on the ending, uh, on the directed by credit. And, uh, well, there's also the, uh, whole thing about, uh, Justice League is that felt like, uh, maybe a, there's a bit of a thing of, I have my personal concerns about is the fact that how it kind of ha seems to have been pushed, uh, forward, very forward in its production. Um, and, of course, Marvel does a lot of its films fast, but uh, there's a particular light in which I feel like there is a time in which it, its production has, um, feels like maybe it went along maybe a bit too soon, a bit too fast, uh, to be able to say is that. When that when you have one of your stars that also has starred in a movie that has come out the same year, when big superhero movie, not a small independent picture, is that I'm just wondering is how uh, that might tell, whole thing has affected the whole uh, process is whether or not the movie um, has given enough production time to be completed, if whether or not that uh, there was anything in particular that has. Uh, makes I might make the final product suffer uh, to just be able to say is that I'm not so this one to uh, think of how that is one thing that has come across in my mind but uh, I can think of it is though they maybe with the Marvel rate at Marvel movies are being produced might be a factor of fact that maybe it's not too something to be too worried about, but it's just something that has come across my mind, especially when it has come so soon after Wonder Woman. But, uh, that's how I feel about it, anyway. And, uh, <clears throat> then there's the aspect of this DC Cinematic Universe is what the future may hold for the whole whole ordeal, right, is whether or not, uh, where the future is something that is to be invested in, and if there is anything 
it will have much longevity, particularly when there has been reports about whether or not DC is going to fully pursue the aspect of the DC Cinematic Universe and uh, make films outside of it. Of course, they, we do have animated films that are coming up, like the Teen Titans Go, which that has no ties to the DC Cinematic Universe. I'd just be able to I'm sad, talk about more live action films that just um, remove themselves from the universe, but I'll get to bit that in a moment. Um, but uh, in terms of the slate of Cinematic Universe films, Aquaman seems well on its way. It's just finished production with um, the Saw director James Wan helming, right? And of course, uh, as to be able to say is that uh, expectation whether or not to be able to do Aquaman justice. I mean, it's got to be hard to pull off something bad, <laughs> as bad as the Super Friends interpretation, which I feel pretty much um, destroyed the image of Aquaman for most people. <laughs> yeah, and it's particularly, it's like, uh, my fish powers have no use here, that tell whole Powerpuff Girls Super Friends crossover commercial, <laughs> pretty much paying a big lampshade on how useless Aquaman was portrayed in that show. Uh, and there's also the fact that we're going to be getting a Batman solo Batman film, apparently titled The Batman, directed by Matt Reeves of Cloverfield and War for the Planet of the Apes fame, which I think is in good hands, though it has kind of struggled to get to that point, because the fact that at one point Ben Affleck was going to direct, but then decided to step down, I would imagine, because uh, being behind the camera on the film is much more taxing. I mean, might be a bit more taxing than being in front of it. I mean, of course, there are certain things that being an actor, you don't, um, you would uh, want to as a director, but as a director, you be up behind a lot of the production of the film, and thus there is that aspect of how exhausting that process might be. Because with acting, you can always see about stunt doubles or by doubles, that sort of thing. If you f don't feel particularly well, or if there's anything that you weren't able to pull off. Right. As to be able to say is that, um, uh, to be able to say, I, Matt Reeves is definitely someone I could see doing Batman well, I mean, with regards to the directing he's done with the Planet of the Apes movies in particular, in which that sort of uh, directorial set particularly brings his own cinematographer or, uh, from those films into this one. I think it would be gr really great to see with the sort of uh, darkness that um, really well, that can be very fitting of the Batman character. And of course, with regards to the big excess of this past summer, Wonder Woman is getting its own sequel in a few years, and I'm glad to hear Patty Jenkins get a return as a director doesn't have to wait over a decade, well, well over a decade, to um, direct uh, her next film. Right? And just to be able to say is that uh, all I can do is hope it's going to be as good, as fun as the first film uh, I'm kind of iffy about the whole aspect that might be taking place in the six and take care of the cold bear era. It doesn't really feel like that something that would be as equivalent. I mean, just kind of thinking is like, why not like do the whole Captain America Civil War thing and uh, I mean, Winter Soldier and just have it be something a bit more contemporary. Though I guess that might be a bit more following a bit more too closely to the whole Captain America thing. But essentially is that I'm not so certain there isn't anything um, in that sort of Cold War environment in which they love it, um, and that feels like it would be the next logical step from the uh, horrors of World War One. essentially, is whether or not that is uh, a much logical step for be able to pursue, but uh, I guess it would be an interesting time in human conflict, but maybe not maybe not one that would be deserving as kind of a comic bookish villain as the first Wonder Woman film. The comic, yeah, like Dr. Poison, that sort of thing. And, uh, 
there's a, something of uncertainty with regards to the Flash movie, in which apparently the plot they're pursuing is Flashpoint Paradox, <laughs> in which uh, by many comic book fans know what that means, and that is being that was a reboot of the uh, New 52, but led to the reboots of the New 52, and that kind of puts in implications as to what DC might be having planned for the DC Simac for Warbirds and DC having planned. And some people are not too optimistic about the fact that that is being applied to a Sam Akivers, that's barely gotten its footing around. I mean, even with being built with uh, as many movies as it has, it just feels like it hasn't really explored a lot of aspects for it to really have this big reboot on there. It's like... So, you know, with regards to how the mediocre to awful reception of the previous film, so, say for Wonder Woman, and... Uh, the uncertainty of Justice League is that maybe some people think it might be a bit too soon to just be able to give up and to be able to just say, this isn't working, we got to really change a lot of things around. But, uh, let's go see how things really go for that, because Flash itself had had trouble productions, a couple of directors have left, and uh, there's been... Just uh, this whole thing is about uh, certain aspects just not going well. And Billy Crudup, who was supposed to be playing uh, Barry Allen's uh, father in uh, Justice League, apparently isn't going to be included in the uh, in the new Flash movies. So, and uh, I'm not so certain whether or not I heard this correctly, but whether or not he'll be included in Justice League or just be one of those missing trailer or possible DVD deleted scenes fodder. So I'd be able to say is that yeah. I'm not too optimistic about the Flash. And then there's more adventures that have been proposed about Harley Quinn, about Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn, um, Birds, I mean, Gotham C. Sirens movie, uh, which is, of course, the team up between Harley Quinn, Catwoman, and Poison Ivy. A lot of people. It's got to be directed by David Ayer, who's done the first Suicide Squad, and which I don't know if he. Um, he's been a sort of writer, in which it has a strength that uh, at times seems to be attracted to writing a lot of uh, morally gray or very. Um, deta very um, not good. Pe Characters, right? But I feel like with regards to Suicide Squad, it mightn't have been a bit out of its element. And so, and just not to thinking about optimism about that movie, though, I just want to be able to say is that uh, I also want to think about a few ideas about uh, who could play it's Catwoman or Poison Ivy. With regards to Poison Ivy, there's the name Megan Fox being thrown around, I'm like, no. She hasn't exactly brought herself to be that sort of actor who really has earned the sort of seductress persona that um, Poison Ivy is supposed to be. So I just was thinking maybe someone who is a bit more, um, who would be able to pull off the look and be able to get the seductress persona. Christina Hendricks is one example or some, they also Jessica Chastain, I mean, so be able to say it's not natural redheads, mind you, but to be able to say is that they really look red, to red hair, well, it's hard to, there isn't a, like a whole ton of natural redheads, that, I mean redheads that are actors that uh, have natural red hair, but just be able to say is that, it's so could have actors who look at with red hair as well, so, yeah, just, um, Weird thing. But essentially, acting performance also pretty much matters there, I think. Those actors, Hendrix and uh, Chastain, might have a bit more to them than that. And um, to be able to pull off the character Pamela Isley. And uh, so, also be able to say as Catwoman, that 
there's one actor that was suggested by him and forgot who it was, but so I don't know if I... I don't know if I can really remember anything I've seen her in, so that is one thing I might just put aside for there and to be able to say is that one idea I had and is Eva Green to be able to play Selena Kyle. Right. It's just, uh, I don't know, I just feel like she is one someone who would be able to pull off that sort of character, pull off that character. I'll be able to say is I wouldn't be opposed to other ideas, though at this moment I don't know if I can think of much in terms of how who would who I'd be able to personally say would be a great Catwoman. Of course. And in the midst of this, there's also going to be a Suicide Squad sequel, and I've heard there was a director selected, but I don't quite recall that who that might be. But I really... <laughs> <laughs> I, there was one suggestion that Mel Gibson should be directing and like with all that he's done with all that he has said and done even with his whole comeback with Hacksaw Ridge he's just to say is that there's dozen of raceways done in the past particularly in light of Hollywood pretty much becoming aware more and more aware of about Harvey Weinstein and how much of a creep he is although they also are people who employ Woody Allen on a regular basis, or be able to keep Roman Polanski on the Academy. But essentially, as I, I don't really think I'd be interested in too much in another Suicide Squad, especially if it comes across as another uninspired plot, and maybe uh, as the uh, first film. And uh, any aspects that at and yes, other things that uh, DC has on the pipeline is the aspect of a Joker in a har spinoff with or without Harley Quinn. And I can barely stand at Jared Leto's Joker in the minor capacity they played in Suicide Squad. I wouldn't want to see a whole movie devoted to him as particular. And there's also other discussions about another Joker movie without Jared Leto. And so just be able to say is that, um, I don't know if I, with regards to Joker, is that he's that sort of character that would want to see him as his own solo movie. I mean, there's something to be explored, but at the mo same time, some origin stories are best not left explored as the reception something like Hannibal Rising no one really liked how it tried to justify the uh, sort of character of Hannibal Lecter um, existence even if it was written by the original author it was still wildly considered to be a gross miscalculation as to what people wanted to see more of Hannibal Lecter what to Pablo Lecter movies, but of course, uh, it's kind of had a rebound with that whole Hannibal TV series, uh, though it's kind of a bit of an alternate universe sort of deal with regards to uh, how things work out with them um, in terms of the character being built. And, um, <clears throat> yeah, and uh, with regards to, and there's also another example that comes to mind is the Rob Zombie reboot of Halloween is that the menace of the character is pretty much uh, lessened a lot less when you try and give a overall elaborate backstory to him, though with regards to Michael Myers, it doesn't have as much of a, not as much of personality per se, but uh, essentially is that... Uh, but essentially, when you try to over-explain a character, it can be a bit, uh, take away from it. Take away from the menace, take away from the, what people kind of endure. I mean, of course, there's been attempts over the years to really explain the Joker, and, but essentially is that some people think, with after all that, it's best to keep a lot of what he is a mystery. Yeah. So, uh... 
Yeah, so that was what I would say is my overall feelings right now about the state of the whole DC Cinematic Universe. I might still end up watching Justice League, though I'm not exactly certain whether or not I will be going in with the highest of expectations. I mean, I was pleasantly surprised with Wonder Woman, but that was just a one out of four attempts at being able to bring up this universe into something and into something that is more than just a kind of a joyless slogs right. or something that uh, very cynically seems to follow other movies in the case of Suicide Squad and uh, so um, essentially I'm not so certain if I'm as excited to be able to put into as much to anticipation to Justice League as in comparison to, say, Thor Ragnarok, which looks like it could be a lot of fun, Black Panther, which looks like it can be, uh, you know, definitely, uh, sub <clears throat> sub definitely something that could be awesome, and uh, Avengers Infinity War we're going to see next year, and then... Uh, even with regards to DC movies, Wonder Woman 2 is still on the pipeline, which I feel like I'd be more excited for than Justice League, or the Batman, for that matter. And just to be able to say is with Aquaman, I'm not so certain of whether or not I'd be anticipating to that, but it will depend on how they handle the character, and um, say thing with regards to Flash... I just hope it doesn't mean the whole reboot, but uh, we'll see how things really turn out for this universe, and still don't know anything about Green Lantern or Cyborg or uh, anything like that, but I just really hope that there are things that, at least with regards to the DC Samac universe, the Wonder Woman is the whole turning point, because unlike some other fam. So I just don't mind the fact that there is trying to be able to compete with the uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe. I don't really mind about that idea with, with regards to the fact that DC and Marvel have been competing with each other for years, and uh, DC coming out with their own equivalent and being successful isn't so much of a bad thing. Uh, but when it's built on the foundation of something that isn't really that entertaining. And um, to say, um, you're, you're really, some of the fanboy responses have been just uh, really soured me on this whole DC Sam or saying thing is because they just seem to embrace this idea about the DC Sam Akiverse being not kitty or not a comedy or anything like that, and just trying to explore something deeper, uh, and just like, I guess, like, it's not necessarily something that is objective, and to say at least is that in the absence of any sort of lighthearted moments in a lot of these movies is that, in some of the movies is that the, uh, it's, uh, doesn't it um, can to makes uh, things be a bit less th to be attached to if it's so if it can't be compelling just by exploring darkness and uh, tragedy on its own it has to have put something a bit more into it right? and just drowning it in that sort of sort of saturating I mean very uh cold sort of uh joyless sort of is that uh it doesn't feel like anything well, a whole lot to be attached to and just because there isn't a lot of humor into it doesn't mean humor is a bad thing but it's i mean just because marvel has a lot of humor doesn't mean it's uh a bad thing is because uh, humor can really lighten things up, can add some levity. It doesn't have to drown itself in tragic moments. I mean, there is still some ridi overlooking some ridiculously tragic moments that the Marvel Cinematic Universe has explored, right? And the humor isn't exactly interrupting those moments, right? It's just a... Uh, to be able to say is when it gets into serious territory, it really um, 
can be a very serious... I mean, I felt like, felt more to the serious discussion about the ethics of uh, a very unpoliced uh, sort of superior foes in civil war than I have with any of the discussions about um, an unpoliced uh, superhero, what godlike superhero in Batman v Superman. As to be able to say is that uh, felt like there was a bit more to the discussions, a bit more weight concerning how much what has been built with those characters in discussion, and the fact that. And just to be able to say is that just because movies set up to do themes does not mean they do them well. And I feel like a lot of what the movies try to explore, don't they don't really do well. And uh, just to be able to say is that because the movie sets out to do something doesn't mean it automatically is good. That's uh, something that is trying to do something different. And to uh, so be able to say is that you might be able to explore a human more human Superman, but essentially the way the movies pursued it, it hit a lot of the wrong notes, that's making it a bit trying to, too hard to uh, make it too realist. I mean, maybe a, just a, uh, just a really a skewed idea of being more realistic, just hammering in the tragedy a lot more, that doesn't automatically mean that it's something that is a bit more human. So, what I can be able to say is that I, I would say, just, um, I guess I'm going on a bit of a random tangent right now, so I'll try and wrap this up, but I will be able to say is that the DC Cinematic Universe is something that um, at least has been able to make it so far, this far, at the very least. I mean, with a lot of these attempts at Cinematic Universe, even DC might have tried lightly with establishing Green Lantern. Uh, to be able to say is that all this... At the very least, this has been able to make it this far, and so we'll see how it really makes it further, and if it can really sh look at the Wonder Woman, this very overwhelming success of Wonder Woman, and see what can really truly make for compelling entertainment, as opposed to trying to make something very as much dire as the... Uh, Man of Steel or Batman v Superman once again, or just something as very, as like a very rote, routine blockbuster as Suicide Squad. So I just want to be able to think here is that um, maybe this is going to be a turning point and Wonder Woman be turn point and suddenly movies like Justice League really um, really turn things around and of course there's also and all the other films that are going to be coming out at yet yeah, with regards to that um, I just um, I'm not too putting on putting a whole lot of faith that it's going to be exactly that and uh, so be able to say is that the films coming up, I sure as I do well to out some hope that there was a chance they might be good, but if there is anything that I, I mean, just be able to say is that I'm, it's pretty much with regards to DC Comics, that is a lot of what I grew up with, and a lot of these, seeing a lot of these characters and being a fan of them, and just be able to say is that that's what I've been growing up with even more than just Marvel Comics and that sort of thing. Uh, to be able to say is looking at a lot of what had, a, what a lot, a lot of that, and uh, seeing What's left to see, yeah, a lot more. <clears throat> What's left to see that the Simak universe does work out and that there is, uh, that it becomes something that can really compete with Marvel in terms of what, uh, 
what movies can be really, <clears throat> what uh, cinematic superhero movies can be. Uh, to, at this moment, it still very much feels like a work in progress, and uh, I just hope, at the very least, filmmakers and moving forward on this system, it just works out. <laughs>